Hello everyone. Today we are going to unbox the Qualcomm Robotics RB3 Gen 2 development kit. This kit is designed to include all the building blocks you need to start developing exciting products and applications powered by Qualcomm technologies for edge AI boxes, connected cameras, drones, robotics, and many more verticals. The kit comes preloaded with Qualcomm Linux software, enabling quick setup. To get you up and running, we're going to show you all the components in the box, set up the kit, and run a sample app. The development kit comes in two variants, the core kit and the vision kit. Note that the outside packaging is identical, but inside there is a label to differentiate between the two kits. Out of the box, the core kit contains the Qualcomm RB3 Gen 2 device, a 12 volt wall power supply, a USB A to USB C cable, USB A to micro USB cable, two speakers, and a pick tool to help set the dip switches. For reference, the Vision Kit includes the Qualcomm RB3 Gen 2 Core Kit with the Vision Mezzanine attached, the IMX577 High Resolution Camera, and the OV9282 Tracking Camera. The first step in setting up the Qualcomm RB3 Gen 2 Development Kit is to set up the debug UART. Before you begin, connect the device and power on with the following procedure. Plug in the supplied micro USB cable to the micro USB debug port as shown. Plug in the 12 volt wall power supply. Hold the power button for two seconds until the power LED stays illuminated. Now, let's proceed to the setup. First, you will have to install Minicom on your Linux host. To do this, run the following commands. Next, let's check the USB port is working. Run this command. The sample output should be this. Now that you have Minicom installed, let's open it by running this command. You will see a set of configuration options. Use the down key and select the serial port setup option. Now, let's configure the serial port for the device by following these steps. Press A on your keyboard to set up the serial device name and press Enter to save the changes. Next, press E on your keyboard to set the baud rate to 115200. If the baud rate is not set to 115200, press the E key again. After that, press Q on your keyboard to set the configuration to 8 and 1. Now, press Enter to save the changes. Press F on your keyboard to set the hardware flow control to No. Keep in mind, all the letters here should be in caps. Now, press Enter to save the changes. You will see the configuration menu again. Select the Save Setup as DFL option here and press Enter to save the configuration. Your UART is now set up. Select Exit from the configuration options to open the UART console. Let's now log in to the UART console. The login is root and the password is oelinux123. Nice work. With this, you'll be able to run sample applications from the UART shell. Before you can connect to SSH shell, you need to set up Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi is operational in station mode. When the device boots up, the Wi-Fi host driver and the authentication for network management are initialized.
Now that you have a Wi-Fi connection established on the device, you can complete these steps to connect to SSH. First, in the UART console on the Linux host, find the IP address of the Qualcomm RB3 Gen2 device by running the following command. From the Linux host, run the following command to SSH into the device and use the device's IP address. Use the following password. Make sure that SSH, UART, and Wi-Fi are all enabled before using the device. Now that we have connected to SSH, let's enable the HDMI display so we can view the output of our sample app. First, connect one end of the HDMI cable to the HDMI port on the Qualcomm RB3 Gen2 device and the other end to your display. Make sure the device is powered on and check the HDMI display. As you can see here, you should see a specific pattern on the display monitor. If you do not see the display as expected, toggle switch 4 of dip switch 0 to on and back off again. For more details, please reference the development kit user guide. The Qualcomm Linux release comes with several sample applications for different multimedia and AI use cases. Let's go over an example for multi-camera streaming or encoding using Dashcam. To execute the application, run the following use cases in SSH shell. First, view the application on the HDMI display by running the following command. View the Wayland Sync output. Next, View the encoder output. To stop the use case, press Ctrl C. To display available help options, run the following command. And lastly, run the Qualcomm GStreamer debug output to enable logging. For example, to log all warnings, run the following command. Occasionally, you may find it necessary to reflash the software from emergency download or EDL mode. There are two ways to enter EDL mode. The first method uses a software command. From the host computer serial terminal, enter the command. To verify that the device is in EDL mode, Plug the USB Type-C cable into the host PC, and in a terminal, type the command. The expected output will be as shown. In the second method, we will press a hardware button. First, with no other cables connected, plug in the 12-volt wall supply. Then, while holding the FDL button, plug in the Type-C USB cable. Note that the other end should already be connected to the host PC. The FDL button only needs to be held until the cable is inserted and the device will instantly come up. To verify that the device is in EDL mode, plug the USB Type-C cable into the host PC and in a terminal type the command. The expected output will be as shown. It is important to note that the FDL button is difficult to access as it is between two boards, but it only needs to be held for a second while the cable is inserted. It helps to hold the device upside down. For more information, please refer to the Dev Kit Quick Start Guide.